Cup, the community person. So he's going to speak next, and I've asked him to just introduce himself uh, to all of you so we know who he is. And uh, then he'll give us more information he's got. Captain? didn't invite you to his birthday party. They're celebrating together. Maybe. But like, as, I, as I stated, uh, you know, I grew up here in the city, and I, I, I seen how the education in the neighborhoods come about. And my perspective is the perspective in the 1960s, which is a very different place, the 70s, the 80s. And I came on the police department in January 1986. And that city and department, compared to where we are today, we, so, we are so far ahead. It's incredible the work that was done. And it's not just with the police, it had to be the community. Because if it wasn't the community, we would not be there. You can have as many cops as you want, but unless you have community support, we will have nothing. So I bring that to, to this a meeting with that perspective. Now, uh, a lot of things come up from time to time. Sometimes we can uh, accommodate you immediately, and sometimes we can. That's why, as uh, Joe says, sometimes we have to speak in private, and sometimes we can speak in, in generalities. But that's basically where I am. I'm standing in for uh, Tommy Alps. He'll be back at the uh, following subsequent meeting, I guess, at the recess. Okay. And then we'll continue from there. Uh, what I'm going to do today, right now, is I know Captain Alps usually gives you a synopsis as to what the crime statistics are. And they're very dry, but uh, I'll, I'll put, recite them. For this week that happened, uh, we had no murders and no rapes. But we did have the six robberies compared to two for last year. Regarding felony assaults, we had six versus two last year. The burglaries, five versus four. Grand larceny, six versus 13. And GLAs, none versus two. Grand total for the week was 33 versus 22 versus 24. Now these numbers are rather dry, but I'll give you a whole perspective. Uh, Captain Ops and I think alike. One crime is one crime to many. But one thing that this doesn't indicate, and I'm gonna recite now, is the work that goes behind this. During the same week also, for the robberies that we, we had six, we also made six arrests. For the felony assault that we had six, we had four arrests. For the burglaries of which we had five, we had two arrests. And the grand larceny, six of which, we had one arrest. One of the things with the burglaries is, when you catch a burglar, you will be surprised, the same thing as a robber, how much your crimes diminish. Because generally, generally people are creatures of habit. If that's what their vocation is, because for some, that's what their, what their vocation is. They go out there and they rob and do burglaries. You catch a burglar, burglaries diminish. And we've had two burglary arrests that were individuals that were known to us. So uh, we do see the difference. About two weeks ago, we had a spike where we, we spiked like 46 crimes for the week, which was humongous. And it, of course, it was something that was uh, concerning to us. The, uh, captain and I, and since that time, as you can see, we've actually gone down. And that's from the work that we had with the officers, and also the cooperation with people reaching out to us, calling when they were suspicious persons. So, in, in, that, in that extent, it's it's, a, it's actually a very positive thing. Um, if any anybody has anything in particular regarding the community, I will be here after the fact, and we can address that. At this point in time, I really don't have anything else unless I want to go over the uh, Capital Month. Capital Month. All right. Capital Month is one of those things that uh, I really do enjoy. You know, when you have cops that go out there and do all their best and get somebody like this individual, uh, Detective Michael Canuffin, he, Canuffin, he wound up getting information regarding a particular individual, and this particular individual. Uh, when when uh, the search warrant was executed on May 26th at 6 p.m., he was arrested with an AK-47, a handgun, some ammunition, and narcotics and scales. 
Now, the understanding of this is the AK-47, people consider that just a rifle, but if you know, an AK-47 is what they call weapons of, uh, mm -hmm. the implements of war. Uh, why some people have them, I don't get into the politics of it, but it's something that's very dangerous. Uh, the AK-47, when you fire the projectile, it travels at 2,350 feet per second. What that means in English, it's that for every second, that bullet travels a half a mile, and that's fast. And it'll penetrate an engine block, it'll penetrate my vest, and it'll make my day uh, very miserable. So <laughs> this arrest by this officer was something that's very positive, and, and I gotta give him uh, a lot of credit. He was well, well worked. Unfortunately, for that phrase that uh, he quite uh, thanked him for, he's on vacation also this afternoon. <laughs> they didn't go out together. vacation, <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that was uh, a very good address, and I want to thank him. And, and I'll pass the word and also the result. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now we get our prime tips of the month. And that's um, our, our public safety officer, our crime prevention officer, uh, Tyrone Medeiros. Hey, you got to give you a good tip to go into the summer. Hello, everyone. I'm Officer Medeiros. I'm your crime prevention officer. Um, I think I see a lot of new faces here today, so I'll introduce myself a bit. Um, I've been here at the 49th Precinct for about the past 14 years. I've been your crime prevention officer for about four. Um, before that, I was your traffic safety officer for about eight years, and before that, I was on patrol. Um, I actually live, well, I used to live, I grew up in the confines of the 49th Precinct. I went to PS96, uh, I went to St. Lucie's. Um, I am a St. Lucie's alumni, I guess. Really? If that means anything anymore. I wonder if you um, went with my daughter. So I'm, I served your community and I lived in it. Um, I used to live, where I lived was actually uh, Parkside Housing, um, 2950 Bronx Park East, apartment 3D. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I loved it, it was 3D because I always I go to my friends, I live in apartment 3D. <laughs> But um, enough of that, not the crime prevention stuff. Um, unfortunately, as um, our Captain Ordonez just stated, uh, one of the things that's been happening is uh, auto theft. Uh, we had two recently, and the two we had was kind of silly. The reason why I say it was silly is because the individuals that had their car stolen, they had stolen because they left the keys, the ignition, the car running. Um, Gee. One particular instance was a new... 2017 Mercedes wow. truck. If you know anything about these vehicles, they are very expensive. Yeah. And on top of that, they had nice Ferengamo bags inside. Uh. And on top of that was a nice $5,000. I don't know why, but that stuff was in the car. And the person left the car on, running in front of their home, ran inside to get whatever oh, they were wow. getting, came back out, and the car was gone. Um, Wow. I will reiterate to you that the neighborhood you live in, the 49th Precinct, is a very safe neighborhood. It was actually rated one of the safest, the safest neighborhoods just uh, maybe a couple of years ago. And even though we might might not have that crowned, um, may, may not be at the top of that anymore, we still are in the top five. So your neighborhood is relatively safe. Uh, however, you must realize, as I do, that we are in the boogie down. We live in the Bronx. You can't leave your... <laughs> One hundred thousand dollar vehicle running the <laughs> in the car. Um, I don't recommend you do that unless you don't want it anymore. Then God's sounds good. like an insurance um, job to me. Another thing that we're getting hit with is uh, very hard in the community is grand larcenies. Grand larcenies specifically of property, unattended property. Um, unattended property could be that you're shopping and you have your purse in your cart and you look to get a. I don't know, to get whatever it is you get when you're shopping, then you turn back around and your purse is missing. Um, other things that we're finding is uh, grand larcenies of uh, snatching. Uh, snatching being you're on the street with your telephone, 
and someone just runs up while they're jogging. This is all in motion. Uh, jogging, runs, grabs your phone, keeps running. Um, these are the types of things that are happening in the neighborhood. This is the type of thing that we're getting hit hard with. Um, my suggestion to you, specifically to younger generation, um, that being 14 years old to 25, that around that range, is that if you have relatives, if you have friends, family, children who are in that age range, especially if they are male, tell them to put their phones away. Um, if they're on the street walking, they don't need to be texting people. Um, and it's a hazard in and of itself because I've seen teenagers walk right into oncoming traffic while their phone is texting whatever they're doing. Um, also along with that, um, uh, teens are being targeted uh, also with uh, headphones. The, uh, specifically the Beats headphones, the Dr. Dre things, um, the wireless headphones in particular, uh, those things are like 250 bucks. Uh, you can sell them used for 150 so <laughs> that thing ripped right off your head while it keeps going. Um, those types of headphones uh, are, are all over the place, they're very popular, um, and they're very easy to spot. You see those things from a mile away, and unfortunately so are criminals. And so they target you because they know if you have that, which by itself is pretty uh, worth a good chunk of change, they know you have a phone too. Um, so my warning to you is just be aware of your surroundings, um, stay off the phones, take the keys with you out of your cars, please, and uh, have everyone have a safe and happy summer. Thank you. Thank you. To that, I will segue into um, introducing you to an officer. Uh, he has been chosen uh, and given the position of the housing liaison officer for the precinct. Um, and that officer is Officer Rowan. So, Officer Lewis, I've um, been in the line for um, 12 years now. The new housing liaison. So, any issues with housing? You know, just give me a call. We can speak after. What's your number? <laughs> I'll speak after, and then you know, get my phone number. Can you give us a phone number? Oh, nine two nine two eight five zero four eight six. Housing. Housing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I normally don't do this, but this is, uh, I'm a little league manager. Um, Benson Torres is the executive director of the Bucks Elite Sports Academy. And I told him he could just introduce himself, say two or three words. And if I go, uh, uh, that means that's over. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, my name's Vinny. Um, so I started this sporting organization called Bronx League Sports. Uh, to promote a youth development to both sports and academics. Uh, you know, it's our third summer. Uh, we've done baseball camps, baseball clinics, all that stuff. We were actually at the St. Teresa Festival this past weekend, uh, giving the community a free clinic. Uh, we're preparing for our third annual youth development camp. Uh, we were for profit the last few summers. Uh, this summer we're for not for profit. Uh, so, you know, we're looking for the support and uh, small donations, all that kind of stuff from the community. So, um, look us up online, BronxLeadSportsAcademy.org. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that social media aspects. And uh, if you guys have any other questions about it or anything like that, if you guys, uh, you guys have kids that uh, you guys want to want me to train with them and all that stuff, uh, just contact me. And uh, thanks for having me. Excuse me? News 12 or Bronxnet, I saw you somewhere. Um, we were at the feast this past weekend, so maybe, that's maybe that was it, yeah. Yeah, you know, we're, we're all geared towards uh, youth development within the community, uh, especially do both sports and academics. I went to a boarding school. Um, you know, I, I figured Bronx uh, high school education really isn't the best for me personally, so uh, I went to a boarding school out in uh, Connecticut. Uh, my graduating class had kids going to Yale, Harvard, Columbia, all that stuff. So uh, if I could introduce some kids in the Bronx to that, and get one or two kids uh, into uh, boarding schools. These schools are fifty-five thousand dollars per year, and I mean, I credit the way I am today due to that. So, uh, 
you know, I just want to like, give what the opportunities that I was given back to the community. So, like, yeah. We have your information. We'll put it on uh, the 49 precinct uh, yes, web. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're going to go into uh, neighborhood reports. But before we, we do that, I think I can make uh, my own personal announcement. Because today, today is my mother's 100th birthday. Wow. clergy and those that participate with us in our meeting. I do want to make this announcement. We have coming up this Thursday, we have an SUV rally, a shooting response rally, which is in a different precinct, so it's not happening over here, but if we all come together in community, this is on 226th Street and White Plains Road, we're going to be walking from 226 to 211th Street. There was two shootings in the 47th precinct that we'll be doing a shooting response. But I also want to encourage the community, and y'all have been very supportive in SUV and what we have done down through the years. We're going to be celebrating our third anniversary. And one of the things that I can say about this community, y'all remember there was a time, and I thank God again for this community, there was a time we was having these shooting responses on a very, very frequent. Now you notice you don't hardly see me anymore because uh, due to not only good policing work, and we commend our 49 precinct, but also through the help of these credible messengers who also are telling the young men and women to put the guns down, that there's been a decrease in shootings in this in our particular catchment area here in the 4-9. But we are having our third anniversary Peace Walk, which is going to be from Pelham Houses to 229th Street, our third annual. We walked two miles, and it's kind of helped us stay in a little shape, <laughs> helped me kind of lose a few pounds, and... Um, so we welcome the community. Last year, I want to thank Joe, because Joe did a tremendous job with helping us with our, even donating the glow sticks that we was able to walk with. And we're going to do that again this year. It's going to be at nighttime that we're going to walk through our community. We're better together as a community. So when we all come together, uh, we are one, and we make a powerful impact. And so we have flyers out there that day, and that's hosted by Senator Kleins also, who's our, you know, from our state senator, who's our... Um, who helps fund our SUV program. That Peace Walk is going to be Thursday night, August the 10th. And I know this is our last meeting beforehand, but Thursday night, August the 10th again, and it starts at 6 p.m. So we're encouraging all the community to come out and the 49 be a part of what we're doing. And we certainly appreciate you and keep up the good work. So we salute the family. Flyers is in the back. We got flyers in the back. Uh, 6 p.m. also this Thursday. Flies is also in the back for that response also. Thank you. I want you to know that the is down a lot. And it's led by the Bronx. 
That's right. And, uh, <laughs> I went to a meeting yesterday with Chief McEwen, and uh, there's one thing he did say. So this will should convince you that we're very safe here. Of all the precincts that did not, there were only three precincts that did not get more cops with this new class. Guess which one? <laughs> Uh, so the 4-9 got, uh, we had no more new cops uh, coming out in the latest class because our numbers are down. And we're fortunate to live in this community. We're fortunate to be part of this community. Um, and the Bronx itself uh, led, I think it was 47% of the decrease as a, as a result of the shootings and the killings in being reduced in the Bronx. So that's 47%. Yeah, almost 20 true. <laughs> well, it, it, it's close. Yeah. Okay, let's have our uh, neighborhood reports. And the first one will be Mars Park Association, oh, Mars Park area. And uh, we'll have Astasi on the grove. Hi, how is everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I've been doing volunteering work for 33 years. I did eight years, uh, six years in the Venice Community Association, 27 here at the Morris Park. I am the coordinator of the Civilian Patrol, and uh, the Morris Park Association has been here for about 43 years. Very active patrol. And I have been a very active patrol, and I have, I'm, as the coordinator, we have about 23 guys. We go from Monday all the way to Sunday on patrol. Uh, on the daytime, we do it on Wednesday. The relationship that we have with the police department is so awesome that when they tell me why don't I say crimes, why don't I say because I don't have to, because I talk to Jay on the phone, and I'm not going to jeopardize myself to say anything, so then there's something that could happen to, the, to our civilian patrol or myself. But they are doing such a great job, and I don't have too much to say. But I want to let you guys know that if anybody would like to join the Civilian Patrol, I'm going to sit right here, I'll be here around. Uh, it will be a pleasure to have you as uh, our Civilian Patrol. And uh, we do coordinate very well with the 49 precinct, and we go by rules and regulations. And I thank you all very much, and have a nice summer.
but it's not. It's just the cartridge itself. But I am aware of that, and mm -hmm. we have a step to address it, and we will take it. Okay, and being this is all this, maybe for the summer, I have to be nice. Oh. I do want to thank the four and I, because I think they're doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. because it's either on, you know, behind the house or on guard, you know, there's areas. Now, when we know that, you know, there's going to be fireworks and we, we hear it continuously, is that a 911 call? Mm, that's no, my not. question, no. You can call 311 and we'll respond to it. Okay. I like to say 911. Okay, I just want to know the proper protocol when people ask me. So is, if it's a 311, and then I'll send out text messages of locations or whatever, because um, we already know the areas um, that where it's probably going to happen. So, um, And the other thing is I just want to keep on asking my request is um, we have a lot of dead-end streets, and a lot of issues go on at the dead-end streets, uh, whether it be parties, um, illegal parking, um, and just recently, there's been a lot of um, cars that have been bouncing up and down, and everybody's having sex in cars at the dead-end streets. Just letting you know, because kids play at the dead-end streets, and there's a lot of stuff that's over there kids shouldn't be playing in. So these are, you know, these. this is what's happening at the dead-end streets. And a lot of times, they're because they're also dimly lit, it's a place to party. So especially with summer coming, uh, if, you know, the people who live there in old homes report back to us and let us know what's going on and saying, you know, can we do something about it? And this is every year, and this is, like I said, most of the springtime and, and summertime. So please, if, even if you go there and sit for three minutes and leave, just to have some sort of police presence at the dead-end streets, that's going from uh, Van Buren Street all the way up to at least uh, Matthews. You know, I know there's Hunt Avenue, Wallace, Holland, etc. They all have dead end streets. And people own their homes there. And a lot of times they're not going to come out and chase these people away. So it, it has, it's always an issue. So if that will be, Badass would be wonderfully grateful if you can sort of keep it on the top of the list. And um, thank you for everything you've been doing. And Badass, please keep it up. And uh, have a wonderful summer. Thank you.
Uh, thank you to our elected officials. Um, it went perfect. The weather was perfect. The atmosphere was perfect. Um, so thank you for helping us with the, with the traffic and, and everything. Uh, no incidents whatsoever, even though the reporter asked how we handle incidents threw me off because we've never had an incident. Um, I know that uh, the precinct is going around saying that the, uh, the crime in Allerton is up. I, I was going to jump out of my seat and correct that at the community board meeting. I don't personally, as a resident there for all my life, except when I was in the Navy, uh, feel like crime is up. I feel like crime is being reported more and that we're trusting the police departments more in our area to call. Um, and I and I think that's a good thing. I don't I don't feel crime is up and you can ask Janice and I, I spoke with her and I and I spoke with Darlene. I don't think they think crime is up. I think crime is being handled and maintained. Um, because that's that's what, what the, the people in my area are saying. So thank you. Um, however um, I'm not happy along with Edith that we didn't get any police. Now I don't need police cars driving up and down Alex in every five minutes. But when there's a phone call it got to be a lot less than five hours for a broken car. Um, and I don't fault you guys at all for that. At all. I know how, how it works and I know how it goes on. But um, those numbers are going to start going down because they're not going to call again. And we're going to go back to the 80s and the 90s where they're saying, well, they don't care. And I know that's not the case. And I know that you guys are, are tied up with, uh, with the lot. So... Um, we got to work together and, and do that because we have a lot of frustrated people on Radcliffe right now. Uh, this woman on uh, in Sunday, I was coming back from a beautiful uh, barbecue with the American Legion Post, and I got home. I left the block for a couple of hours and uh, got back, and this woman took a brick and tried to break into this woman's car who was uh, mourning her family's loss in the funeral. What? Um, wow. We got her on camera. We're going to get, either we're going to get her or you guys are going to get her. So you guys get her. Um, because uh, we know where she lives. And uh, they were trying to tell the police officers where she lived. And there was, there was uh, no reciprocation. So uh, it's not going to be me personally. But I know the family, they're angry. Um, I'm trying to prevent a situation here. Uh, follow up on it so it doesn't escalate. Uh, she's in the, the, the housing area, and uh, it needs to get resolved sooner. It, it needs to be urgent because I don't want this. Okay, I don't want that escalating uh, any further. Okay, thanks, Jay. Um, other than that, I just need to reemphasize uh, the Kruger to so Oliveville section. You know, White Plains Road being right in the middle. Someone could be there. Um, just present, I feel like uh, we will prevent a lot of other incidents happening in that area, especially for our, the, uh, the undocumented workers that are coming out over there. Uh, over the summertime, in the past couple of years, they've always been strong-armed. Now, uh, rumor has it you caught one of the men that was harassing these guys. So um, I don't foresee that, but I'm also worried about a couple of buildings in that area uh, continuing the, the summer tradition. So I want those guys protected as well. And I want to thank you guys for a great job and, and for uh, for a great. All cons I brought out all the, the negatives, but it's really been positive on Allerton. Um, it's been it's been great for seeing the families come out again. So I don't want to leave on a negative note, but I want to bring to your attention the things that uh, we're concerned about. So thank you. Last month mentioned uh, how the system, how our dispatch system works, 
and the reason why these people are waiting four or five hours for, say, a car accident or some other um, low uh, priority job. Um, most of our low priority jobs, though, are car accidents. Um, so I figured I'd tell you now how to handle that. If you have a car accident anywhere in New York City, um, there's a good chance that you can be waiting for a while. If you're waiting for more than an hour, I would say, um, as per state law anyway, take the information of the person you had the accident with, that means their license, their registration, their insurance card, and reciprocate that as well, give that to them. And then what you can do is you can file your own actual report at your uh, closest precinct. Um, the actual report you were looking for is basically the civilian accident report. Believe it or not, it's the same as our accident report. The only difference is the heading and yours have more instructions. Um, it all goes to the same place, it goes to Albany, DMV. Um, you will, if you get into a car accident and police are not responding uh, as fast as you would like, this will save you tons of time. Um, just make sure that you do report it because um, if you don't report it, the other person does, then the insurance company, your insurance company, is going to ask you well, what's going on. Um, they might use that as a reason to jack your rates. Um, you have up to 10 days from the day of the accident to make that report. So you can just do it whenever you get the chance to once you will increasing actual one of those reports. Right, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. A lot of a lot of insurance companies they like they like to see the police report. Um, typically, if the damage is over a thousand dollars, they really like to see the police report. But um, it's basically the difference between getting that police report and sitting somewhere for five or six hours. Mm -hmm. well, well, when it comes to that, uh, when it comes to the actual reports, it's he should, he said, he said, she said, anyway, uh, unless the officer witnessed it, you're just putting on what you say and what the other person says and let the insurance, play, insurance figure it out. The, um, the civilian actual report, um, even though if like you say that insurance companies don't have any weight to it, they must have weight because it's actually part of state law that it must be filled out for accidents over a thousand dollars. And it's when it's hit and runs also. What happens when it hits, when you've been hit by a car, and as you're pulling over, the car takes off and goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You still have to wait for an RMP mm -hmm. because that's, you know, you can't. Can't that, leave. That's a different situation. That's crime. I'm not talking about crime. I'm talking about accidents. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tyrone, I wasn't waiting. Okay, uh, I think that takes care of our Bronx, many, Bronx Park East. Bronx Park East. So That's, no, no, Ralph's not here, but I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> uh, Grateful Baglio, I'm on the Bepecker board. And mark this day in your calendar because Raphael did not make it. But um, so he asked me to, to stand up for him. And a couple of things. Uh, speaking about the problem still with the hookers on um, Arno and Kruger, the Four Corners. Also, uh, he said that uh, some merchants have complained that there's been, there's been robberies on White Plains and Allerton. Uh, a beauty salon got robbed, and we're wondering, you know, well, you know, if we need some more police presence there. It wasn't. It wasn't the beauty. Salon. It wasn't the beauty shop. It was actually a person inside the shop that got robbed. Okay, so. but there's been okay, but, but there seems to be an increase in robberies in the White Plains Allerton area there, and that's about it uh, for that. I just wanted to, Tyrone, when it comes to the accidents. What I've noticed is when you have an accident now, people don't want to share information. So what do you do in a situation like that? They don't, they don't, they say, well, I don't know you. I don't. Well, the suggestion I had was for mutual, mutual agreement. Unfortunately, some people don't want to give personal information. Yep. And uh, isn't it by law, law they're says, supposed to? Get that information anyway. But they, okay. All right. So it's, it's state law. Okay. All right. That happens, well, and I know it happens sometimes. It's called license plate. There you go. I forgot we have cell phones now. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, that's it. You. Everybody have a nice summer. And uh, that's it.
we're there to meet and debrief and uh, communicate with our police and each other. Um, it's normally we've never had an incident, um, and um, it's a place where you can come and get a lot of information from a lot of sources. And I'm just hoping that everybody shows up. You know, we do have a big crowd. Um, I think the biggest we've ever had was almost 5,000 people. You, oh, you know, it's a good thing that they're not all there at the same time, and we'd be in big trouble. But um, we do have people that do go around and count heads, so we know that we get at least over 4,500 people there. Um, and it's really an opportunity for us to just come together as a neighborhood and as a community. Um, you know, we always see each other in meetings and we're always rushed. This is one time when we can actually sit down, listen to good music and talk to each other, um, get to catch up on whatever we're doing. So I'm hoping to see everybody there. And um, if you have any questions, you can always call um, Community Affairs and uh, they'll be able to give you my information if you need it. Um, or I can give you my number now, um, which is 718. Two three one nine eight hundred, and I'm at extension eleven, and that's my day job. So, um, hope to see you there. Thanks for listening. August first, Tuesday, August first. The first, it's always the first Tuesday of every month. And that's countrywide. Everybody has it the same day. Yeah. Um, just to give you a little back, I'm sorry. Just to give you a little background about National Night Out. Um, it came together because they they um, they held a contest, and they were supposed to take a satellite picture of the United States, and the community that had the brightest lights would win whatever. I don't even remember because they stopped doing that for a while, a while ago. But um, as Joe said, you know, the, the reason why our national night out used to be small was because I would get a two-week notice that we were actually participating. Um, so I would just scramble to get together as, you know, as many people as possible. And I would always have it, in, you know, um, it was always very small and really catered more towards the kids because we wanted to reach the kids, especially by Zimmerman. Um, and then we decided, you know what, why don't we just do this a little bigger and move it to a, a bigger space because, you know, Zimmerman and um, Graham Playground were kind of small for what I was envisioning. And it's really turned into this really great event. One year I had somebody from the 4-7 come as a spy. <laughs> and she was like asking me, oh, a very nice lady, oh, you know, you guys do such a good job. You know, how do you get these people here? And, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, I'm not telling you anything. You want to make your own national night out, you better work for it because we did. <laughs> and it's really turned into this really great, great event that everybody enjoys. I don't think I've ever had any complaints. Um, and um, I just want, you know, everybody to come and have a good time. Could you give them the, the, the area where it's supposed to be? The well, it's going to be at Bronx Park East and Light Academy inside the park at Commerce Mall. So, um, you know, yeah. And, and, and you use the zoo entrance that way. It's right across yeah. from where you would go into the zoo at Bronx Park East, right. walking or driving. Okay, guys, the express I, bus where the express bus is. I have to cut it off now. Okay. Really? But it is a big affair. But, um, Okay. okay, we're going to have elections right after um, we allow Mahmoud uh, Tanen uh, to say a few words. He's from the office of the mayor, and he's the Bronx Borough Director uh, Community Affairs Unit. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mahmoud Tanen. I'm the new Bronx Borough Director. Mayor's Office Community Affairs Unit, I see some new faces, uh, and I see some old faces as well. Thank you mm -hmm. for having me at your last meeting. I uh, know this is your last meeting. Yeah, I want yeah. to, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. I want to be interactive. Uh, so like I said, my name is from Old Corner. I'm new, um, the new Brunswick for Director at the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs. It's good to be here. I didn't get a chance to come to your last meeting because this meeting conflicts with the 48 Inclusion Council, Community Council as well. And so I missed that meeting today, and I'm and I'm here today. Sorry about that. And I'm here today because I wanted to make sure two things. I wanted to thank the 
more for helping us to make the uh, three weeks ago the, the mayor was in the Bronx as part of the city hall and the bar initiative. It was a great success and I want to say thank you to the council for making it successful. We also had the rally for the school mayor extension which we had about three weeks ago and I also want to say thank you because it was a success and um, to stop by and also say wish you a happy summer. But I'm here with one of my colleagues from the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs. She has an announcement that she can give you guys quickly. The President, Joe, has my contact. I'm going to be here after the meeting. If anyone who's going to, who want to talk to me on one-on-one, -on -one, you want to get agency to come to your event during this summer, I'm the press person of contact mm. at the Mayor's Office to help you get that done, okay? So thank you very much. Do you have a phone number, Yes, I do. I'm going to put my card on here. So, following up on what he said, um, my name is Hermione, I'm with the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs. I just wanted to make a quick, a quick announcement, but first I wanted to thank you for having me here, for having us here. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the New York City ID. I wish you are. Uh, we're going to have an IDNYC pop-up at Bronx House. And we really want you to come by and apply and encourage people to also come. Um, the pop-up is going to start in August. So I also have my cards, and if you want us to come to your meetings, just please let us know. Yes. Would you please put the phone number to your office out loud? So yes, so I can give you my mobile, which is 626-618-5021. We have different initiatives. We have the New York City ID, and we also have Action NYC, which is uh, immigration, immigration Legal Services. Um, my name is Terry. Yes. I have a question. Does the ID work for the day qualified ID included on the driver's license? And no. So this is a municipal ID program. Um, so you know that there are different um, stages of government. So this one falls under like the uh, municipal realm. So it's not in place. No. It, it, it's not meant to replace it. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Yes. Okay, before I lose the entire audience. So, and I'm sorry, most of the people, a lot of the people that uh, are on our, our voting list that couldn't be here today. But uh, we do have to have an election today. We have uh, one contest, and I'm going to ask uh, our chairperson, our election committee chairperson, James Francis. And his helpers and people that are on the committee, Edith Blitzer and Veronica Castro, um, come out and give out the ballots. And, um, again, we only have one contested uh, uh, election. Yeah. Uh, Joe, I just need one more thing. Everybody could just settle in just because this is a. Uh, this is an official election. I need uh, a proxy since Captain Alf is in here. Will it be uh, Jay? Or it, could be, it could be anybody. Oh, a proxy? You mean yeah. somebody to... From the precinct. Yeah. Don't so will it the uh, what, about, what about the captain? Uh, let Jay do that. He's community up here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No. Um, so I have the list of everyone who is uh, qualified to vote. You had to have attended four meetings uh, within the fiscal year. Uh, so if you don't qualify this year, from September until May, no, Mar uh, March. Thank you. So March, you have to attend four meetings, and uh, then you can vote the the next election, which is two years from today. It's a two-year term. The uh, Election. The seat up for uh, for vote today is that of treasurer, and we have to put them in alphabetical order. So on top is Grace Lavaglio and Hazel Mura, who is the incumbent. Um, since the configuration here, what we'll do: take your time, stay in your seats. Uh, we'll go around to each table. We'll verify. If either of you can take uh, this side, Veronica. Take the left. Yep. It shouldn't be more than the names are. What do you have? 
Good. It is a secret ballot, and if you feel, guys, why? Just settle in. It's going to be a few minutes. If you contest that your name should be on the list, the book is present. Um, come see me. Don't argue with Edith or Veronica. And uh, I'll check it in the book to see if you are qualified. It's a secret ballot, so you don't have to put your name on the ballot. Don't put your name on the ballot. Just so you know the uh, the process, each each voter card is initialed on the back, and they are numbered, so we can have them accounted for. Very nice, Jim. What's the what's the office? Treasurer. Voting for the Office of Treasurer. Jay? Let me explain. I know what you're talking about. The person you're talking about is an unsound mind. A person that not, has, doesn't have those faculties up there, they're going to act as that individual was naked, that's correct. He was covered, he was taken, he was removed to the COVID to the site to the hospital. At that point in time, unless he's a day of time. Okay. But once he's taken to Jacoby for site, mm. Uh, situation where he's not listed. 
being that he was not listed, he asked him that if he wasn't removed from the location, she would have to leave. The mother of this individual. She complied, packed up his stuff, put it away somewhere. He left, he's residing with one of his children. He's no longer residing in that location. Okay, now, this report, it's a report for the incident. Whether you want to wipe the Turkish with this, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's something that... That is the right thing. I am constrained by the law. Whether you like him or not has nothing to do with it. I am required by law to do what I do. He was taken out because he was acting He was taken to the doctor. He introduced himself in the nose. And if they let him go, they are out. That's out of my control. That's out of my control. I am out of control. Unless he hurt somebody, I couldn't do anything after that. Can I just say that he wasn't one of the people? No, I didn't. But man, you just answered your own question. I cannot prosecute. I cannot get the assistance of the district attorney if you don't come forward. There's no such thing as I heard. There's, there's no court of law in this country where I heard you did something. Except it's a job. That's not the third world. Yes, you have to call. This is a problem. There's eight other instances. So he's out there doing drugs continuously, so whether he does have a valid mental problem and the mother's on drugs. Well, man, she does. It was dusted, and that's what happened. Let them out. If they don't know that this guy's whacked out, how could they let him out within an hour? You have to understand, it's not illegal so they do. to be a, a drug user. It's illegal to possess it. Yes. You got to understand the perspective. Okay, what's it? 
And the last thing I want to announce, I'm proud to say that we have a 48-hour turnaround time with our constituent concerns. So um, this is a great thing that the Assemblyman does. He's really on top of us. Uh, he wants to know that within 48 hours, the, con the concerns are closed, the cases are done. So this is what we have been doing. We have worked on over a thousand cases that we've closed in 48 hours. So I commend the assemblyman, and uh, I thank you all for all your help in making this possible, especially the 49th Thank you. Thank you. some of the hubris from the, the uh, excitement from this evening, uh, a very wise politician told me years ago, for every complicated situation, there's a simple answer. And it's usually wrong. So we should all keep that in mind. Keep level heads. Uh, no major announcements. Uh, I just want to, on behalf of the assemblyman, wish you all a good summer and uh, hope to see you at National Night Out. Yeah. 